Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. In this video, we're going to talk about how to detect imposters in the church. The reason why is because I came across an interesting quote. As I was reading a book about Joseph F. Smith, he was the sixth president of the church. And uh, there's a couple other quotes I want to share along with that, but it's a really, really good quote. You guys, there's a lot of deception out there, especially right now. And from time to time in the church, you have groups that pop up that claim to have new revelation, scripture, or say that the church is falling astray or is just outright apostate. Um, it, it always happens. And unfortunately, there's people that fall for it. And so, you know, if you come across something, it doesn't feel right. It feels dark. Um, it's outside the mainstream of the church. Then there's probably something wrong with that thing. But we're going to read the, the quote. It's really well worded. But first, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Okay, so I have a new logo for my channel. So uh, don't be confused. This is the new logo. Um, I felt like it was just time to mix it up a little bit. And um, I want it to be clear that my channel is focused on Christ. So I love the sunflowers because I live here in Kansas and the sunflower is my wife Jenica's favorite flower, and it's now mine. And that was like one of the main features of our early marriage. So sunflowers have a lot of meaning to me. Plus, there's sunflowers, right? You think about the sun, you think about Jesus Christ, you think about the celestial kingdom. So, and I also like the wheat imagery, especially now that we live here in Kansas. So we're going to go with this uh, for a while. Maybe I'll keep it forever. I have no idea, but I'm really happy about it. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram. Okay, I'm trying to uh, work more on putting out Instagram and Facebook content and uh, TikTok too, but I'm really focusing on Instagram. And I'm putting together these story highlights. There's going to be more of them, which uh, if you don't like to access my spreadsheets, I'm going to try and take all the key quotes about the second coming, uh, different doctrines like Adam on Diamond, the 144,000, New Jerusalem, stuff like that. And you can click on the story highlight, and then it'll take you through a series of uh, quotes. So follow me on Instagram. Uh, the link is in the description box below. Uh, here is my first logo, 1.0. Uh, and then I changed it to the one that you're probably more familiar with, with the hexes in the background. Um, but now we are on 3.0. So I love all of them. Uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm a very visual person, uh, before doing, before doing YouTube, I was a freelance graphic designer. So I just, I love this kind of stuff. And then this is what I have now for like the cover photo or banner for, you know, whatever YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then here it is right here on YouTube. Okay. Um, another bit of business for right now, I'm going to step away from the Flood the Earth challenge where we're sharing copies of the Book of Mormon. We hit the original goal of 10,000 copies of the Book of Mormon shared. And uh, I've talked about before how YouTube is the hardest video game I've ever played. And uh, the Book of Mormon challenge was kind of like a mini game within the larger video game. I'm just teasing, of course. This is really important stuff. But, um, you know, there's times where you run faster than you have strength. And uh, I've kind of hit that point, at least for right now. I could see I could see going back to this maybe, maybe like next year or something like that. But I think for the rest of the year, at least, I'm going to step away from this. But please continue to share the Book of Mormon. The easiest way to do it is to go to the Gospel Library app, go to Scriptures. And then at the top, you'll see this um, banner with this button here that says Share. And it's for the Book of Mormon app. And it's designed for people that are not familiar with our church, potential converts. So you can text it, email it, direct message it. Um, so please continue to share the Book of Mormon, but please don't report it to me for right now because I'm not going to be uh, doing this anymore. It, it takes a lot of time, you guys. <clears throat> I have to go through here and I I have everybody, everybody's names over here and I'm tracking all the stuff. It takes time to update this. I have to do it manually. There's not a way to automate it. There's some things that I can automate. I have some formulas on here, but it's just, it's very time consuming and I, I just got to take a break for right now, but thank you for participating and uh, keep it up. Okay. So 
The following quote, like I said, is from President Joseph F. Smith, uh, the sixth president of the church. And this can be found in Journal of Discourses. This is volume 24, and we're on page 188, column B. And here we go. P please pay attention to this. Please, <clears throat> for all that is good, please pay attention to this, and please share this. Um, I have what I'm about to read. I have it on my spreadsheets right here, on my spreadsheet called Quotes A through Z. It's currently on row 152. Um, so you can copy this and then email it to somebody or put it on your Facebook feed or whatever you got to do to help somebody out uh, that, that maybe isn't too familiar with the church. Maybe they're new and they're falling for some you know, group or person out there that is claiming authority outside of the church or within the church, but now they have the authority or whatever. Okay, here we go. It is not my business nor that of any other individual to rise up as a revelator, as a prophet, as a seer, as an inspired man. So he's covering all of his bases, whatever the person is claiming, you know, they're claiming like they're Samuel the Lamanite or something like that. It is not my business nor that of any other individual to rise up as a revelator, as a prophet, as a seer, as an inspired man, to give revelation for the guidance of the church, or to assume to dictate to the presiding authorities of the church in any part of the world, much less in the midst of Zion, where the organizations of the priesthood of the priesthood are about perfect, where everything is complete, even to the, the organization of a branch. It is the right of individuals to be inspired and to receive manifestations of the Holy Spirit for their personal guidance, to strengthen their faith and to encourage them in works of righteousness, in being faithful and observing and keeping the commandments which God has given unto them. It is the privilege of every man and woman to receive revelation to this end, but not further. Okay? There's always people out there that want to admonish the leadership of the church or say that they're apostate and now uh, the Lord has chosen them to correct the church or to call them to repentance. No, 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 no. Uh, he has more to say about that. Okay. The moment an individual rises up, assuming the right to control and to dictate or to sit in judgment of his brethren, especially upon those who preside, he should be promptly checked or discord, division, and confusion would be the result. Every man and woman in this church should know better than to yield to such a spirit or to follow people that have that spirit, I might add. The moment that, su <clears throat> the moment that such a feeling presents itself to them, they should rebuke it as it is, in the, it is in direct antagonism to the order of the priesthood and to the spirit and genius of this work. We can accept nothing as authoritative, but that which comes directly through the appointed channel. And you guys, that doesn't matter if it's scripture. It doesn't matter if it's supposed revelations that somebody received. If it's scripture and we're going to accept it as authoritative, it comes through the church. That's how it comes. And then the church recognizes it as authoritative. We can accept nothing as authoritative, but that which comes directly through the appointed channel, the constituted organizations of the priesthood, which is the, chan the channel that God has appointed through which to make known his mind and will to the world. It was necessary prior to, Okay, before, prior to the organization of this church, that God should, should select among the inhabitants of the earth some person through whom to reveal his will to mankind. And it pleased him to select for this purpose the youthful and untutored boy, Joseph Smith, as David of old was his choice. Um, but there was no priesthood on the earth when Joseph was called. This is something that uh, these people like to pretend that um, there's there was already priesthood in some other group before it was restored uh, through Joseph Smith. First, he received the Aaronic priesthood from John the Baptist, and then after that, the Melchizedek priesthood came from Peter, James, and John. That's why they had to come, because the priesthood was not on the earth. 
But there are people and there are groups that claim that it has been here. Um, I've already covered this before. This is still the same spreadsheet. It's currently on row 390. Priesthood lost. Jews, Christians, Native Americans, like Christians outside of our church, none of them have had the priesthood. The the Jews, which is just the church, um, right now it's the apostate part of the church, but the Jews or the Old Testament people, of course they had the priesthood until they lost it after Christ. And it's not because their temple was destroyed, because I've heard that argument before. It's because priesthood keys, the very same keys that were brought back to Joseph Smith, were lost. So you can have the priesthood. Like, let's say that um, those who hold keys right now <clears throat> were were suddenly gone for whatever reason. But you have the Melchizedek priesthood. You're not authorized to perpetuate or to... Uh, give other people the Melchizedek priesthood because it has to be done by use of priesthood keys. You have to be authorized to do it, even though you already have the priesthood. Does that make sense? So it's not because the temple was destroyed. It's because the priesthood keys were lost because those who held the priesthood keys were martyred. So I have this quote that we're reading right now from Joseph F. Smith, but there's also this from Elder Orson Pratt. Uh, It's also in the Journal of Discourses. And he goes through here and talks about the fact that the priesthood was not on the earth uh, before, like from the time that the priesthood keys were lost until Joseph Smith, the great apostasy, it was not on the earth. Uh, It had been in the heavens all the time. And then he specifically says, the Jewish people who pretend to have the Levitical priesthood, and he's not, he's not like being rude to the Jews, but they believe that they still have the priesthood. They have the Levites. And then within the Levites, they have this, the descendants of Aaron, known as the Kohanim. So they believe that they still have the same priesthood from the Old Testament. But Orson Pratt is saying that um, <clears throat> the Jewish people who pretend to have the Levitical priesthood rejected and do still reject reject the true Messiah. Consequently, their priesthood is null and without authority. And they could not, therefore, <clears throat> excuse me, administer baptism for the remission of sins, as John the Baptist did, the forerunner of Christ who held that priesthood. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. He talks about the fact that John the Baptist was the one who restored it in our day. But let's go back to uh, President Joseph F. Smith's quote. But there was no priesthood on the earth when Joseph was called, legally constituted by the authority of heaven to officiate in the name of the Lord. It was necessary, therefore, that someone should be selected as the first elder for the beginning of this work for there, there has been, okay. For there has, there has to be a beginning and he was the one ordained for ordained for the position, which he occupied in field after calling and setting him apart for the work of introducing and establishing this gospel of the kingdom. The Lord of course reorganized him or sorry. Oh my gosh. The Lord of course recognized him as his mouthpiece, as his authorized agent, if you please. And it would be absolutely inconsistent, unreasonable, and absurd to suppose that after God had called one man and appointed him to this work, that he should pass him by and go to somebody else to accomplish the same purpose. So in other words, the supposed prophet or inspired person that's calling the church to repentance or the prophet to repentance or saying that he's a fallen prophet. No sensible person would accept for one moment such a proposition. To seriously contemplate any such idea would be charging the Almighty with with inconsistency and with being the author of confusion, discord, and schism. The kingdom of God never could be established on the earth in such a way. Through Joseph, then, the Lord revealed himself to the world, and through him, He chose the first elders of the church, men who were honest in their hearts, men whom he knew would receive the word and labor in connection with Joseph in this great and important undertaking. And all that had been ordained to the priesthood and all that had been appointed to any position, whatever in this church, have received their authority and commission through this channel, appointed of God with Joseph at the head. This is the order, and it could not be otherwise. Excuse me. God, pay attention, God will not raise up another prophet. 
and in other people to do the work that we have been appointed to do. You guys, there are people that think that that is what God would do. They, they don't understand the history of the church. They don't understand the doctrine. They've never read things like this. They should know better because even if you haven't, if you have the Spirit, you can feel when there's darkness. You can feel when there's apostasy. It doesn't feel right. It's confusing. It feels dark. There's a discord between whatever that person is saying in, in the church. You shouldn't need to read this, but it helps. God will not raise up another prophet and another people to do the work that uh, we've been appointed to do. He will never ignore those who have stood firm and true from the commencement, as it were, of this work, and who are still firm and faithful in so much as they continue faithful to their trust. There's no question in my mind. Now, here's the thing. There's no question in my mind of their ever, of their ever proving themselves unfaithful as a body. For if any of them were to become unworthy in his sight, he, meaning the Lord, not a self-appointed person, he would remove them out of their place and call others from the ranks to fill their position. So if you think that um, President Nelson or somebody has become unworthy, that they're apostate, they're a fallen prophet, guess what the Lord would do? He would replace him. And if anything, it seems like President Nelson, uh, his life is being extended and preserved. Him, potentially President Oaks, uh, definitely President uh, Jeff, President, oh my gosh, President Jeffrey R. Holland of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and possibly President Iring as well. So, if they were fallen, he could easily just let them die of old age or or whatever some medical condition. But it seems that the Lord is actually preserving their life. Continuing. And thus his priesthood will never be found to be composed of the right man. Okay. And thus his priesthood will ever be be found to be composed of the right men for the right place, of men whose backs uh, will be fitted for the burden, men through whom he can work and regulate the affairs of his church according to the counsels of his own will. Okay, here's an important part right here, uh, especially the red parts. In the moment that individuals look to any other source, you guys, let's think about ourselves. Are we looking uh, to some other person or group uh, that's claiming to be inspired, that's claiming to correct the church, that claims to be doing things uh, that they would need priesthood keys to do? And the moment that individuals look to any other source, that moment they throw themselves open to the seductive influences of Satan and render themselves liable to become servants of the devil. They lose sight of the true order through which the blessings of the priesthood are to be enjoyed. They step outside of the pale of the kingdom of God and are on dangerous ground. Whenever you see a man rise up claiming to have received direct revelation from the Lord to the church, independent of the order and channel of the priesthood, you may set him down as an imposter. And there it is right there. And I've seen it so many times. I've been a lifelong member of the church. It happens to different degrees. When I was younger, when I was 16, and I finally could drive, and I could uh, work and have a job, I remember one time I was working at um, Salt Lake International Airport, and there was this a uh, guy there that's like, hey, you got to come and see, you know, this presentation. It's going to be this Saturday. It's going to be at this house. Um, there's this guy that says that he has the true Book of Mormon. And so me being a stupid teenager, that intrigued me. And I went and I could immediately feel that the person was a charlatan, a false prophet. He told a little story about him, how he grew up on a ranch and he was riding on a horse and he fell off the saddle and then an angel like saved him because otherwise he would have gotten like a concussion or died or something like that. And then he he was telling some kind of story about how uh, he had the true Book of Mormon, it, the, the like the fully translated or additional parts or something, not like the sealed portion, but he was saying that what we have uh, is not the full work or something like that. Oh, and by the way, and then he was asking people for money um, to invest in his business. So, but, you know, that was just like a side thing, of course. Um, 
So it's just, it's not that hard, you guys. If you just use logic, like what uh, President Smith was saying here, like it doesn't make sense that the Lord would work in that kind of way. And after we've been told time and time again that this is the last dispensation, the only dispensation that will not fall into apostasy, it's been said over and over and over again. If you understand priesthood keys in how they work, you would not fall into this error that some people do. So I'm going to read this one more time. When you see a man rise up claiming to have received direct revelation from the Lord uh, to the church, independent of the order and channel of the priesthood, you may set him down as an imposter. God has not called you to go out to the world to be taught or to receive revelations through apostates or strangers but has called and ordained you and set you forth to teach and lead people in the paths of righteousness and salvation. Um, I think there was one more thing I wanted to share. Yes. This is also the quotes A through Z spreadsheet. Currently row 35. The topic is apostates. And uh, there's this interesting quote. This is from Daniel Tyler, early, me- early church member, Mission president of the Swiss mission, served in Joseph Smith presidential campaign mission, served in the Mormon battalion. You can find this in um, the old, uh, there was like an old church magazine called the Juvenile Instructor. Um, essentially, it was the uh, for strength of youth uh, for, for that day. August 15th, 1892, page 492. The name of the article is Recollections of the Prophet Joseph Smith. Okay, and uh, we'll end with this. Let us, my young brothers and sisters, shun the evils of apostasy, bearing false witness, and betraying any of the Lord's anointed into the hands of the wicked, lest our future lest our future be like theirs. When the prophet had ended telling how he had been treated, Brother uh, Behunin, or I don't know how that's pronounced, I'm going to say Behunin, remarked, If I should leave this church, I would not do as those men have done. I should go uh, to some remote place where Mormonism had never been heard, heard of, settle down, and no one would ever learn that I knew anything about it. The great seer immediately replied, Brother Bahunin, you don't know what you would do. No doubt these men once thought as you do. Before you joined this church, you stood on neutral ground. When the gospel was preached, good and evil were set before you. You could choose either or neither. There were two opposite masters inviting you to serve them. When you joined this church, you enlisted to serve God. Uh, when you did that, you left the ne- the neutral ground, and you never can get it, you never can get back onto it. Should you forsake the master, you enlist to serve. It will okay. Should you forsake the master you enlist to serve, it will be by the instigation of the evil one, and you will follow his dictation and be his servant. End quote. He emphasized the fact that a man or woman who had not taken sides either with Christ or Blyle could remain on neutral, could re- maintain a neutral position, but when they enlisted under either the one or the other, they left the neutral ground forever. And so that's what's going on with apostates that do this kind of thing. They're not serving Christ. If they're not serving Christ, who are they serving? Under whose influence are they? So I would encourage you, like I've said, use my spreadsheets. Copy and paste these things on Facebook or share them however you see fit. Save them for yourself for future reference. But I'm going to try and get back to working more on my spreadsheets. Like ever since um, going to Utah in October, just it kind of like, I don't know. It's been hard for me to get back to my my rhythm uh, that I had before Utah. And it's been good. There's been a lot of things to talk about. This general conference was amazing. But I want to get back to building up, you know, my spreadsheets, collecting quotes. And I hope that you can use these for your benefit and for others, there's a plethora of information here. 
and it's all authorized. It all comes from authorized sources. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.